Hello, I'm Peter Lockerman, and on the 18th of April I was going to give a concert of Jake Thackeray songs at an in-town church in South Shropshire. Sadly, like everything else in the world, that's had to be postponed due to the dreaded C word. Uh, so John Burt, who was organising the concert, and I thought it might be a nice idea to put some of the songs on the interweb to bring a bit of Thackeray cheer to disappointed concert goers. At the moment, uh, the vast majority of us are very sensibly all staying at home and this means, according to recent government statistics, that there's going to be a lot more sex about. So uh, I thought it might be useful to give you a few of Jake's thoughts on that very subject. His first song is a uh, whimsical little ditty and it has my favourite title of any song I know. It's called Isabel Makes Love Upon National Monuments. Isabel makes love upon national monuments With style and enthusiasm and anyone at all Isabel's done Stonehenge and the Houses of Parliament But so far little Isabel's never played the Albert Hall Many a monolith has seen Isabel for uh, quite a number of years and I was delighted quite recently to discover that Jake had written uh, an almost mirror image uh, male version of the same song. So uh, 
In the spirit of equality, I'd like to sing you a song called The Vicar's Misses. Your worship, I want to kiss the vicar's missus. Your worship, I appeal to you. I want to kiss a vicar's missus, and your vicar's missus will do. I've kissed the wives of tax inspectors, bank managers, madams galore. The better halves of rent collectors, one little kiss but nothing more. Your worship, I really need a vicar's missus, I can't get it from my mind. It's not because I am lubricious, I am religiously inclined. Holy Mother Church has felt my onslaught. I chased the wives of clergy all my life. I once embraced a bishop's consort. That doesn't count, she wasn't his wife. Your Worship, I've kissed the wives of many a cop, sergeants, inspectors, plain clothes men. One little peck, nothing improper. It's not a thing I do again. I've kissed my way through most professions, the roses, landlords, aristocracy. I kissed your wife at the petty sessions, the lad, you have my sympathy. Your worship, I really need a vicar's missus. I shall be rapid and discreet. Without a vicar's missus's kisses, my collection's incomplete. It's not as if I'd loot or ransack his property, his premises. I'd never knock a vicar's neck Just give his wife a little kiss, your worship. I once had one within my clutches. Rally in song, she puckered me up her lips. I left the vicarage on crutches, converted by the curate's crucifix. But when I go to hell or Hades, I find the answer to my prayer. Cause all such vicars and their ladies, they'll all be there. isn't confined merely to the human species. I, I have it on good authority that most animals and plants do it too. Uh, so again, in the spirit of equality, this is a song about a sexy chicken. It's called The Bantam Cock. And upstanding bantam cock, so brisk, so stiff and sprung, with springy step and jaunty plume, and a purposeful look in his eye, in his little black blinking eye. Hand. I took him to the coop and introduced him to my seventeen wide-eyed hens. He topped and he topped as a hero tops, then he bowed from the waist to the mall and then. He upped and he topped them all again, did. And then upon the peace of the ducks and the geese, he rudely did intrude. With two glazed eyes and open mouth, they bore it all with fortitude. And a little bit of gratitude they did. Twenty hysterical turkeys and a visiting migrant swan, but the bantam thundered on. Dear. He ravished my fantail pigeons and my lily white columbine, and while I was locking up my budgery guard, he jumped my parrot from behind. She was sitting on my shoulder at the time. Clapped his hands to his head, fell flat on his back with his toes in the air. My 
I took calls when dead And the vultures circled overhead Dear What a champion brute What a noble cock What a way to live and to die I was digging him a grave To save his bones From the hungry buzzards in the sky When the phantom opened up his slime And A terrible wink, the way that rapists do. He said, You see them big daft buggers up there? They'll be down in a minute or two. They'll be down in a minute or two. Well, I'm going to sing one more song in Jake's journey into the wonderful world of sex, and this is his uh, amusing take on male sexual fantasy. It was, um, it was written when he was a young man in his 30s and you can see through the wonders of video technology that uh, I'm not a young man in his 30s. So uh, the song was really to be sung by someone who was fit and virile and at the peak of his sexual powers and clearly I don't quite fit the bill. So if you feel all this is just... Uh, too upsetting, um, maybe you could close your eyes and pretend it's someone else. Oh, maybe that's something you've done already. Uh, this song is called The Lodger. My granddad, <laughs> sorry, start again. My landlady had three lovely daughters. They used to come and make my bed each day. They used to come and clean my living quarters. But then I'm a quick, quite sure they didn't stay. There was Mary, she was cherry, there was Helen, she was well and truly skeptical about my qualities. There was Julie, she was truly well portioned, but of course she brought exhaustion on my icky arteries. But I was wrong, they weren't at all impervious to the possibilities of high romance. And I sensed a certain girlish nervousness. In the way they thought in my pyjama pants And I was right for late one night Sweet little Mary Like a fairy as I lay sleeping Came a creeping to my side She was mine, it was divine But we were doomed for very soon Into the room came Sister Helen And she cried Mary go to bed Off Mary went now, young man, Helen said, for your punishment, we mustn't have a fight, we mustn't make a row, turn off the light. It's my turn now. Well, after all, I'm young and relatively vigorous, and though I still protest my innocence, by temperament I'm strictly unpolygamous. And if I sin, I sin in self-defense. Nevertheless, I must confess I would have missed this kind of bliss. And when it ended, I was rendered comatose. But loud and clear, very near in my ear, a loud voice spoke, and I was awoken from my post-coital dome. Helen, go to bed. Helen went away. Now, young man, Julie said, you'll have to pay. You blighted Helen's charm, filched her purity. Now open up your arms. Come and filch me. I was amazed and really rather tired. I thought I'd given all that I could give. A little kip was all that I desired. But I'm British, so my upper lip was stiff. She was chaotic, idiotic, quite exotic, and ecstatic, acrobatic, and emphatically fine. All to no good, for when I could open my eyes, to my surprise, I saw her mother looking into mine. Julie, go to bed. 
what you would have to see. Now listen what I said, I know the old routine. I'll do what you like, but I shall be vexed and I'll bloody well go on strike. If Grandma's next. Well, if there's anyone still watching, thank you very much indeed. Uh, and let's all look forward to a much safer world when we can have a proper concert all together. In the meantime, stay safe, stay well, and stay at home. Thank you very much. <laughs>